Hello, football fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today I am going over my Week 8 picks for you. We will talk about that. We will talk a little bit about what happened last week. As you probably know, and as has been a particularly... Um, nagging problem in this particular NFL season. There was, again, a couple of games that one of the teams was vastly superior to the team they were playing and still ended up losing the game. And it seems like that happens all the time. You remember you remember the uh, show Beyond Belief? was one of my favorite shows. I think one of the, it had a couple of different hosts. One of the hosts at one time was Jonathan Frakes, who uh, played Commander Riker in um, Star Trek The Next Generation. But anyway, it was a great show. What they would do is they would give you like three or four scenarios. You know, something that, some description, like a short story of something that happened. And, uh, any number of them could be fake, made up, and any number of them could be real. So, you know, like they would say, a UFO landing in a farmer's backyard, or a kid uh, goes into his, his bedroom and disappears, no one sees him again. Or three girls summon Satan using a Ouija board. Or... Uh, the San Francisco 49ers lose a game to the Minnesota Vikings. Well, you know, you're going to sit there and say, hmm, I don't know. I think the 49ers losing to the Vikings, that's got to be a fake story. But no, no, that was real. That was one of the real ones. And uh, they could probably have thrown in the, uh, the Buffalo Bills losing to a very bad New England Patriots team. Because that happened too. So last week, I'm just going to get right to the point here. Last week, week seven, I was six and seven. Six right, seven wrong. Now, if you flip that by two, and you give me two more right and two few, fewer wrong, I would have been eight and five, and that would have been a good record. Six and seven is not. Again, the monkey at the zoo probably could have gone six and seven because he might have guessed that San Francisco was going to lose to Minnesota. No one else in the history of man would have done that, but the monkey might have. And he might also have guessed that the New England Patriots were going to somehow beat the Buffalo Bills. So, uh, long story short, I've got to kind of be on the lookout now for Bills games that could be trap games. And San Francisco 49er games that could be trap games. Now, on the uh, flip side of that, um, you'll recall in past weeks I've talked about teams like the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs not putting teams away and winning as big as they should have. But this past week, they both did that. So... Um, so there is that. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to get into this week's games. There is a full slate of games this week. There are 16 games this week. Everybody is playing. So let's hope that I can really make up for some lost ground here after going 6-7. and seven. And by the way, going 6-7 and seven in week 7 puts me at 61-45 and 45 on the year, which is like... 56 or 57 percent so i gotta get that up i mean that's that's just not really acceptable so we're going to look at the week eight slate um and that's going to begin with the thursday october 26th game between the buccaneers and the bills and let me go up here and uh, get my uh, magic marker and uh, we will make the magic marker green. I don't know why I made it red in the past. I mean, you know, but anyway, um, 
You got the Buccaneers visiting the Bills. Now, I did say I have to be on high alert for the Bills to lose a game to somebody that they should beat. And they should, should certainly beat the Buccaneers, especially since they're at home. But the Buccaneers are really... I mean, I could have said this last week about the Patriots, though. The Buccaneers are really a vanilla team that doesn't look like they got anything going for them. They don't have any real offensive weapons except, you know, one one of their receivers. Um, but I'm still going to go with the Bills. So we're going to go, we're going to take the Bills there. Go with the Bills. I'm, I'm telling you right now, this could be the trap game. One of the trap games that I end up looking back on next week and saying, why did I pick the Bills? But I am going to do that. So now we start with the Sunday, October 29th games. And the first of those is a game in the Meadowlands between the two New York teams. And uh, it's the Jets at the Giants. And in this one, I am going to take the Jets. They're coming off a bye. I don't think they played last week. Now, the Giants won, and they beat the uh, Washington Commanders. That was another game that I got wrong. Um, the Giants had looked listless and lifeless, and, the, you know, I mean, the Commanders didn't really look dominant, and they lost to the Bears for one. But I thought, you know, the way the Giants look, they just aren't going to beat the Commanders. But they did. But that's still the Commanders. I think the Jets are have certainly have a much better defense than the Commanders do. And, and you know, Zach, uh, Zach Wilson, he had another week. He had a week off to, you know, work with the uh, first string offense. And I think he's starting to put everything together. I think he's starting to figure it out, what he's got to do as an NFL quarterback. And they're, the Jets are just really a more talented team than the Giants. So we're going to go with that. Um, next one you got is the Steelers are hosting the Jaguars. Now, I keep picking against the Steelers because that offense is terrible. Me and a bunch of old guys from the neighborhood here that I could round up could score on or uh, could, um, could stop the Steelers' offense from scoring. But... Um, that wasn't really that wasn't the case last week. The Steelers put up some points, and uh, but the Jaguars, man, the Jaguars are an up and coming team. They did lose a game that they should have won to the Texans, um, but I they're they're a good young team. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, the Jaguars, they scored a lot of points last week on a Saints team that has a good defense. I am gonna. Go, I'm still gonna go with the Jaguars, even though the Steelers keep proving me wrong. The Steelers keep kicking me up in my ass every week when I pick against them. But that's just how I feel. Even with them being at home, I don't think they can beat the Jaguars if the Jaguars play anywhere near the way they can. So now you've got the Eagles at the aforementioned Commanders team, and the Eagles really came off they uh, are were they one of the ones i mentioned because they should be one of the ones that i mentioned but yes yes i did they're one of the teams that i was saying you know where's this great team where is this great juggernaut of a team that was in the super bowl last year that we were expected to see because they were winning games but they weren't winning them impressively and then they lost to the jets so you were thinking okay i don't know if the eagles are really that team but last week they proved, yes, we are that team. They beat the Dolphins. They punched them in the mouth, and they beat the Dolphins. So, uh, And then the Commanders, like I said, they lost to the Giants. That's pretty much all you need to know. I'm going to take the Eagles in that one. So the next one we have is the Rams at the Cowboys. The Cowboys are coming off a of bye the Rams, I believe, lost a game that they should have won. Let me see. Let's, where's my sheet here? I had the Rams. I had the Rams beating the Ste the aforementioned Steelers, which they should have done because, but they couldn't. They couldn't shut down that Steelers offense, and that's saying a lot because, like I told you, a bunch of guys, you know, my age from the Gaithersburg area could shut down the Steelers offense. So. Um, yeah, 
Um, I, I, it, it's it's going to be a tough one here because is the Rams offense that exciting young offense that I saw earlier in the year or is it the one that couldn't beat the Steelers? Um, and then the Cowboys, you know, who knows? They're supposed to be good, def- really great defensively, really. And they're supposed to be better offensively with Mike McCarthy calling the shots. I am, I'm going to say I'm going to go with the Cowboys here because the Cowboys are at home. They're the home team that gives them a little bit of an edge. Um, I still don't trust them, but the Rams have shown there's teams that they're going to lose to that, you know, aren't, aren't really that great and didn't have to do that much to beat them. Um, next is the Vikings at the Packers. Now the Packers, they look lost with, uh, with Jordan Love at quarterback. Love, I, that dude still needs, you know, um, like one comedian in the past said, he needs to cook a while because he's not, he's not ready yet. Um, he's not ready for prime time. I think the Packers might have either made a mistake in their evaluation of Jordan Love, or they just didn't uh, fully prepare him for this starting role that he's in. The Vikings, meanwhile, well, we discussed the Vikings. The Vikings beat the 49ers, who two or three games ago were everybody's pick to be the Super Bowl NFC you know, champion representative, but (laughs) I don't know about that now, but they still, they were good. Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins is, he is, if he's not a top 10 NFL quarterback, he's close. He's maybe 11 or 12, maybe 10, but he's close to the top 10. And uh, he's starting to bring the Vikings roaring back. I am going to go with the Vikings on the road in Green Bay. Next one you got is the Falcons at the Titans. Now the Titans are starting to trade people off, but they're at home. You know I like what the Falcons are doing. I like the whole Falcons vibe this year, but I don't, I you know... I pick them, and, and they do win for me sometimes, but they barely win. They barely beat the team that they're playing. They make a lot of mistakes. The Titans are at home. I think Vrabel this time is going to have them ready. Um, I'm going to go with the Titans. It's kind of an unpopular choice if you've been watching the channel and following you know how I feel about the Falcons, but I'm just going to go out on that limb, and I'm going to say that the Titans are going to win. Next game we got is the Patriots on the road in Miami playing the Dolphins. Now, even back when the Patriots were a dominant team and they had Tom Brady and they were the greatest team and they went to 15 Super Bowls in a row, they never could manage to beat the Dolphins in Miami. And now they're a crappy team without Tom Brady, with the anti-Tom Brady at quarterback, so I am going with the Dolphins. The Dolphins are the uh, the new greatest show on turf. They uh, but they didn't show that against Philadelphia because Philadelphia, like I said, punched them in the mouth. But uh, the Patriots aren't punching anybody in the mouth. Well, they did that to the Bills, but uh, yeah, I again I don't really know what happened there. So now you got the Saints at the Colts, and who am I picking in this one? Let's see. I am going to go... I'm going to go with the Colts. The Colts almost beat the Browns last week, and they really should have. uh, But they got screwed on a uh, a bad call by the referees. Uh, Uncatchable ball. Which, by the way, uh, I just want to say, nowadays, referees in the NFL never take into consideration the uncatchable ball. They just don't consider that anymore. It's either pass interference or it's not. And the pass interference has nothing to do with whether the ball was catchable. But anyway, I digress. They got screwed. 
Uh, but they they played a really good game against a great uh, and really the Browns defense, like we said coming into last week's game, the Browns defense was setting all kinds of defensive records uh, or on a pace to do that. And the Colts still scored a lot of points on them. So the, I don't think that the Saints, who also have a good defense, will be a problem. I mean, Minshew, Gardner Minshew, that guy, that guy is a real deal. I mean, he is, like I said, I and I stand by it, he's the best backup quarterback in the league, although now he's really the starter for the Colts for the rest of the year. But the Colts are at home. They've got, they've got a good team. I think they have a better overall team than the Saints. Carr has been flat in his uh, Saints, um, you know, uh, his Saints tenure so far. I'm going to go with the Colts there. You got the Texans at the Panthers. Now, this one should be pretty simple. I mean, the Panthers are a listless, lifeless team. Um, they're not playing very good football. Um, and the Texans, you know, with uh, C.J. Stroud. Well, wait a minute. Is Stroud injured? Uh, you know what? I don't even care if Stroud is injured, but I don't think he is. I'm still going to go with the Texans there. Take the Texans on the road at the Panthers. Browns at the Seahawks. <coughs> now, we've already discussed. The Browns did beat the Colts. Now, they, they played a good game, but. They were handed the game by the referees late. Still, they played a good game. And they do have a great stifling defense. The Seahawks have won their share of games this year. They're hovering right around 500, but there's nothing special about them. I'm going to go with the Browns. Next, you got the Bengals and the 49ers. And what did I say at the opening of the video? I said, I got to watch out out for the 49ers that they're not the real deal and they're not we're gonna go with the Bengals <laughs> the Bengals had the week off uh, Burrow had a week to recover from his leg injury or his shoulder injury or his leg and shoulder or his leg shoulder and head whatever it is that was ailing him he had a week off to take care of it and uh, the Bengals yeah and the 49ers like I said they lost two games the last two weeks the team's that they should have been able to just roll their helmets out on the field and win. And they didn't do that. Next one you got is the Chiefs at the Broncos. Broncos are at home in this one. I picked the Broncos to win last week and I was right, but I was barely right. And the Chiefs finally showed the dominance that they, uh, that they should have been showing and everybody expected when they played the Chargers. As a matter of fact... Kelsey was so wide open, it was crazy. Every single play, he was like wide, wide open. And he didn't have somebody draped on him, nothing like that. He didn't have somebody even within three yards of him. So if the Chiefs can play that kind of football, they're going to manhandle the Broncos. Next ones we got, and the Ravens. The Ravens are another one. I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't mention the Ravens in the outset, but they were another team that I was thinking... This team should be a lot more dominant than they really are uh, in games, you know, in games that they're playing. And we were waiting for the dominant Ravens, and we definitely got the dominant Ravens last week. The Lions actually got the the uh, the butt end of the uh, dominant Ravens when they they absolutely smoked Detroit. So, um, and then they're playing a Cardinals team that. <laughs> Not a very good team. I mean, you know, I went through, again, I went through all that description of the Ravens when really they're playing the Cardinals, and that's about all you really need to know. Next we have is my Bears. My Bears are going on the road to play the Chargers. Um, hey, Badgent, he was looking great. He's looking good. And I do expect Badgent will play again. Um, but... Um, Last week they were playing a downtrodden Raiders team. And down by downtrodden, I mean terrible. So <laughs> uh, we're um, here. I'm going to, you know, I, I, I like how the Bears have been playing lately. 
You know, it took them five games to figure out that there was a football season going on. But, um, and Badgent, hey, you know, Badgent could be our Brock Purdy. Who knows? But I, I got to believe that the Chargers at home are going to beat them. You know, they, they looked bad against Kansas City. They were leaving Kelsey wide open, but we don't have a Kelsey. And we don't have a Mahomes. And we don't have an offensive line like Kansas City has. Anything that Kansas City had that they could use to beat the Chargers, the Bears don't have. So that brings us to Monday. now, And that is, by the way, it's going to be the Sunday night game. So that's going to be interesting. I might have to check that out and stay up late, even though it's a work night. And then uh, you've got Monday, October 30th, the day before Halloween. And you've got the Raiders playing the Lions. And uh, did I just say that the Raiders are a bad team? Yeah, I did. So we're going to go with the Lions, even though they got absolutely had their asses handed to them by the Ravens. The Raiders are like on the opposite end of the scale of the Ravens. So those are my picks. I'll, you know, kind of scroll back down through them, give you another look at them. But uh, that's it. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what teams you or what games you disagree with me on. What teams you think are um, having a good season this year. Uh, what you think of my crappy picks last week. Whatever you want to write. Because anything helps. Any kind of comment in there helps. So uh, that having been said, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.